Welcome back. This is Good Morning Kenya. If you're just joining us, Karibu Tenasana. We are glad you are with us this morning. It is exactly 25 minutes past 7 a.m. And we want to get started with our lifestyle segment. And just as I mentioned, today we have such a fantastic interview lined up for you guys. It's all about the creatives in the industry doing fantastic work. And I love the fact that it's also about keeping and maintaining and building on our cultural heritage especially some of the marginalized communities that we have here in kenya so we'll be having i will be introducing you to her in not too long but in the meantime do let us know where you're watching us from this morning our sms number is up and running 20154 is the number do leave a name and location you can also get onto twitter the hashtag the official hashtag for the show ever remains a hashtag good morning kenya our official station handle is at kbc television and my handle is at Genuine Boy and tag my colleagues as well at Ramaguko, at Dorina Rang, and at Ray Manyara. We'll be letting you know about that in a bit. But to let you know who we have today on our lifestyle segment, we have Jackie Lebo, who is the project lead and creator of the Exchange Project. Karibu Sana. Thank you so much. We're so glad to have you this morning. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. I am sure you're on social media. Yes. So why don't you go ahead and give us your social media handles? Uh, on Instagram, Jackie Lebo, right. and on Twitter, Lebo7. Lebo7. So yeah. if you have any questions or any comments that you feel you want her to address directly, just slide in those DMs and be nice. Be nice while you are at it. Welcome once again to Good Morning Kenya. We're glad you're with us this morning. And we just want to understand what this artist exchange program and project is all about. So maybe we can even start with a bit about what you do before we get to the project in itself. Yes, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I run an organization called Content House Kenya. All right. And we got together a, bu a bunch of artists and filmmakers and writers because we were seeing topics that were not being covered that were really, I, I believe, of interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was about five years ago. And we, we really wanted to start, it, to start covering topics that were not being covered like in the mainstream yeah and especially topics like this and cover them in a really interesting way and we started with some uh we started with a, sp a lot of sports and mm -hmm. uh, we had a documentary on rudisha and he, when he went to the london olympics yes. and he won and we did that all the way up to the london olympics and we're like why is nobody following this guy he's so amazing and he's gonna do something like really ground shaking yeah and then we did something with boxing and then in Trukana, when, when oil was discovered and water was discovered, we, we get the day one reporting and, and we do understand how the news cycle works. But mm -hmm. we said, um, these stories are so interesting and they illuminate the Kenyan condition that we can go and really cover, cover them in depth and start to challenge people's perceptions as to what they think of Trukana, what yeah. they think of these areas, and not think of them as just marginalized, but actually see the richness and culture that is available there. And that's what we started. Yeah, that's how we started. I love it. And you know, the fact that you choose, why or rather did you choose to just use art in such a creative way to go about, you know, um, bringing these ideas to life? Because one would think uh, maybe a documentary or a news feature would do, but you chose to use art, and especially now for this exchange project, yeah. You chose to do to use art and go heavy on it. Why was that? We do have a documentary as yeah. a base. Uh, but when you go there, the way they dress, the way they sing, yeah. the way they uh, carry themselves, the way ceremonies are part of daily life, it's so astounding that you know it's documentary art in yeah it's art in itself <laughs> it's and then you see how we used to live art was, and culture was not something in the museum culture yeah. was part of everyday life and that's why we said oh we have to like we have to go crazy on this because we have to really show people how we are you know we've lost that identity and we can start to reclaim it mm -hmm. you know we can look at you know the things that we have now the cars the social media the computer. yes but we can also look at interpret them had, through yeah. what we have and bring the best of that forward and create our identity in an interesting and new way that suits us that's not a copy of someone else yes and that's the beauty about uh, the maasai especially the ma tribes when yeah. it comes to just staying true to their culture yeah. it's one of the communities that have actually managed to do that over time now let's talk a bit about the exchange project it um, started yes. a while back yes. you can tell us how that started and yeah. even when you're looking for creatives to come on board for, uh, be part of this project how that whole space and time was okay so uh basically we I, as i said we are, we're shooting a documentary there it's mm -hmm. on trukanafilm.com if anybody would like to go and see it All right. it's still in the process of shooting mm -hmm. 
And what happened was anytime we'd post something on Instagram, uh, a lot of artists would reach out to us and say, uh, can I come? Can I come with you? Can I come do some photography? Can I come jam with the musicians that you're shooting? Yeah. Think, yeah, things like that. So those are the artists that, that we sat down and said, what can we do? And then, as I said, there there's a lot of artistry in everyday life, mm -hmm. in how people dress, how people sing, how people... You know how you are when you're small and you always draw a lot and you sing a lot and you're you always play. doing something. Exactly. So in, in the in the African way of life, in the traditional way of life, that does not end when you go to school. Yeah. And and they maintain it there. And it's it's a really beautiful part of life. So we, we just we met a lot of artists together and then some of them expressed interest in work, working with us mm -hmm. and those are the artists that we continued with. So from last year when we met we went and travelled all, all around the, can, uh, the county of Trukana. We went, because it's very different, you know, you think it's one place. Yeah. There's Lokichar in the south, there's the central area with the lake, there's Loima, there's uh, Lodwa, which is the, the capital, and all of them are quite different. Mm -hmm. And so we traveled around, and now this year we started producing the work, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the first uh, part of the project that you did was called the Flyest Wedding, or the Flyest Wedding. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that, and you know, even the name in itself, where yeah. did that come from? So the Flyest Wedding in Africa, um, basically, because we were coming from Nairobi and Trukana, and it was like a merging of two geographical regions, of mm -hmm. two cultures, we were like, what is the ultimate merging? It's usually a marriage, a wedding, yeah, 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 a wedding. So we're like, what if we created a fictional wedding that featured mm -hmm two artists bringing together their two cultures, their yeah. two lifestyles, their two, uh, you know, their two essences together. And how would that look like? How would that look like in terms of as a microcosm of a conversation between Nairobi and Trukana? Yeah. And, and that's how that came about. And uh, like you can take something very literally or you can really go, you know, to an interesting, yeah. deeper and creative way about it to start to spark conversation about uh, exactly what you're talking about, our culture and what's the role mm -hmm. of it and how it would look like. Like, why, why do we get married in white, you know? And I'm glad to say that a lot of people are, uh, called us after that and they're like, you know, I want to change how I'm doing my wedding. And people are already in that process of changing how they look at themselves and how they dress and express themselves. And we're just contributing to that and pushing it even further. Even yeah. further. You know, after you put out this first project, was the reception as you had hoped it would be or it even surpassed your expectations given from what you were receiving? Guys even wanting to change the concepts <laughs> of their wedding. People were amazed and, and we were very grateful for yeah. that because we realized there's a hunger for this kind of work. Yeah, the only thing they were very disappointed that she wasn't a real wedding, you know, <laughs> they were upset at us. And we were like, you know, it's it's fiction. It's like a film, you know. Yeah. If if we had the funds available, we'd make a film and which you would understand immediately. So because uh, we are able to make the photography, you have to understand it in that vein and you have to understand it as a centerpiece of mm. sparking conversation and sparking imagination, not not necessarily like a real thing. Yeah. And just using a fictional <laughs> bit to bring the change that you were hoping to exactly, do. Exactly. Now, even when you're putting, uh, doing that entire project and, you know, p uh, to the point where you put it out, um, what were the, some of the challenges that you guys had to overcome during that period that, you know, uh, maybe this time around with the second project um, could have not been as much problems as they were in the first one? Um, I think exactly like trying to explain to people the fictional versus mm. the real narrative and then uh, just the overwhelming response. We really wish we had the resources to take so many more artists on board. Yeah. However, what we'd like to do uh, that we've learned this time is enable, uh, share what we've learned in terms of how to work together with artists from different parts of the, of the country mm -hmm. so that people can take it and make it their own in various regions of Kenya, yeah, mm -hmm. not just northern Kenya. No. Yeah, and that will just actually leads me to my next question. You know, what even made you settle on Turkana even in the first place? Because one would be wondering, okay, um, that is a way up there. So why Turkana in the first place? Uh, we were already making a documentary there mm -hmm. and that's what we were very astounded by just mm -hmm. the everyday uh, practice of culture that's part of everyday life and that's why it was uh, very interesting to start there. We were already there. Yeah. Uh, now let's talk a bit about the second uh, project that you guys have put out. It's uh, Floating Flying. Yeah. What's the idea behind Floating Flying? I think 
when you go to Turkana, the, the wind has a very interesting quality, you know, as, as, as you sit down and listen to it and, and, and people tell you, oh, that's, that's the wind that's coming from the lake, you know, it's, or that's the wind that's coming from here. I mean, as you know, there's a wind power project there. So the wind is very prevalent. It makes itself yeah. known because it's a natural place. So we're very interested in, in the different winds and, and that cause, uh, you know, so that led to now a discussion on levitation and flying and mm -hmm. what it does to the lake when it comes. And we're very, um, we're very inspired by nature and, and that kind of thing. And that's how that project came into being. And then, of course, you know, we go through a very rigorous process of sitting and discussing and then uh, we now create the work, yeah. Now, even as you were trying to put this work together from a creative's point of view, you also needed input from, you know, the people of Turkana. Yeah. How was that interaction with the people there? Two of the artists are from Turkana and Karamoja. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, basically, we sat down together and we, we said, this is what we'd like to do. And they were like, uh, these are the beads that we can make and, 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 this is the you know this is the way the wind comes so this is where we should shoot and uh, if you look at the, the the traditional pots one of the artists brought them from her mother's house so we have a lot of uh, it's it's really a collaborative project yeah that involves the people there and yeah. i love that you actually involved the you know locals from there who actually understand you know um the truth their own truth exactly. now also still looking at this project you know that now talking about the shooting project the shooting period mm -hmm. how was that it was very interesting um because it it involved uh, a lot of compositing mm -hmm. uh it was very new for us it was uh, interesting very challenging um but you know but always a pleasure because we get to work with uh artists from karamoja mm -hmm. and trukana and we really get to learn from them and they learn from us and it's 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 really an amazing communal process yeah what was the most challenging bit of this now the second project uh trying not to fall in the water because <laughs> that's actually shot on the lake yeah yeah so trying not to fall in the water and you have one costume you don't want to get it wet yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that was pretty much the biggest challenge that you guys encountered during the second shoot yeah it's it's, a, it's just challenging in terms of um, yeah, trying not to fall in the water <laughs> and also the light changes very quickly um, So you have to shoot like you have to make a decision very quickly because by by 8 o'clock The light looks like the way it does here at midday. It's yeah. different. Yeah, so you have to shoot between literally like 6 30 and 7 30. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now when you put out this second project How was the reception for it? You know uh, given that the first one did you know set some sort of standard yeah. for future projects now when you put out the second one, how was the reception? We've been again. We've been very grateful uh, People are saying it's changing how they've looked at the region uh, We've had groups call us. Mm -hmm. I've had like four groups call me to visit Trukana and uh, yeah, one was a group from outside. One was a group of 300 students from Spain mm -hmm. and they wanted to go to Trukana. They, they were looking for a place to travel to and they went to Trukana. Wow. One was a group of like 11 people from all over. Uh, there's also been a lot of interest from other people uh, who are just like, they didn't know about the cradle mankind, about the, the history. So for us, it's just sparking that discussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the second one, people are like, I mean, where where are we going to go from here? And then, of course, we have some people who are still like, why is this a fictional project? We don't get it. So we're still trying <laughs> to have a dialogue with them. Yeah. yeah. Like getting mad at you for doing yeah. something that you didn't think would have this much impact. Exactly. I, I think I understand where yeah. they're coming from. Yeah. Now, just looking at, you know, the first project, the second project, it elicited such a reaction that maybe you hadn't anticipated as yeah. a team. But what does that even tell you about when it comes to how we are sort of losing touch with our cultures only to be reminded in a way that is so beautiful? We, we are so happy to play that role. Yeah. Yeah. And... I must say that people are already on that path. So it's just kind of 
it's, it's giving them that extra impetus to go back and start looking at their culture and start looking at themselves. So we are contributing to a discussion. We are mm -hmm. not the be all and end all, but we're just happy to, to be part of it and we're happy to be part of it in such a strong way, yeah. And also just trying to involve you know, other artists who are in the industry and wondering how they can be even part of this project. Do you have avenues where they can reach out to you guys and uh, share their ideas and how they can be part of this project? Because I understand there's more uh, of this project that you're going to be launching? Yes. Uh, so far, we put out a call. Mm -hmm. uh, if you follow, if you just go Content House Kenya on any of the social pages, you should be able to find us. And that's where we put out the calls, which is probably going to be next year. Mm -hmm. However, we've also had some other artists who want to replicate it in their home regions. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be sharing with them our experiences, uh, the lessons learned, that kind of thing. And then they can launch their own type of projects, mm -hmm. yeah, in their own regions, yeah. Is there a specific attempt? of creatives that you are hoping to target with this project because you know it's mostly visual uh, we do have a music project it's yeah. just that it's not yet launched uh, we do yeah we do have uh, a music project and we have it, yes it is a lot of visual because it's it's actually that's what the the space lends itself mm -hmm. to however we're open to just listening to anyone to see whether it will fit. Mm. It may not fit. However, what we'd like to do next year is share all the practices and lessons that we've learned. And then uh, also bigger people like the East African uh, British Council, East African Arts, mm -hmm. who are supporting this type of projects in a major way. So that next year you can apply and do your own project. In your own yeah, way. Yeah, in your own uh, way. Your like, own area of in expertise. In your own area of expertise, in your own area of interest, in your own geography graphical setting uh -huh. How, however we can share with you we can always share with you what we've learned our processes and that kind of thing that one we're very open to doing uh -huh. get in touch through our social pages yeah. so just because it's not being done now it doesn't mean it will not be done exactly all yeah. right and i'm sure some young person is just gonna come and just blow us away I know. with the next version iteration of their own project yeah. and that's the beauty of creativity exactly. you can never tell which direction is uh, direction is going to go exactly now um you had mentioned earlier before you know we went on air that you know this is just part of a bigger project yeah maybe what's the idea of this bigger project that you guys are hoping will actually be understood by the public and bring sort of keep the, uh, bring the change or just start a conversation that you're hoping to actually start or keep going yeah we just want to create such amazing work that it makes you stop yeah and once you stop then you listen and then we start to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And that conversation is about um, culture, like you said. We can, uh, we, can ha like we can have cars and iPhones and all those things, but we don't have to completely be how people are yeah. in other parts of the world. We can also take from our cultures, which emphasized community and mm -hmm. sharing and, and looked out for the bigger, you know, the bigger whole rather than the individual. So, and also in terms of natural resources that are found in Trukana, mm. making the local communities an equal partner and not just prioritizing 10% people. As and when yeah, need yeah. shows up. Yeah, no, it should be, yeah, exactly. It, it should be better than what we are doing now. Yeah, yeah exa exactly. So just start to have those conversations and say, you know, this is such a rich area. You should not just look at it and say, you know, this is, we have to drive growth and just take these things out. Yeah, you have to also consider what's there. What yeah. you can put as opposed to just, you know, after the recent discovery of yeah, exactly. oil and water in Turkana, yeah. that's when, you know, sort of the conversation about the northeastern region started, yeah. you know, becoming more important, yeah. in quotes. Yeah, in quotes. In quotes, exactly. Yeah. But they, they were already very rich in yeah. their own, and they have a lot to teach us. So that's what we'd like to have the, the bigger project drive yeah and are you guys also looking to go um, into other different cultures different communities or that is still um, in the works in terms we of bringing like out um, the different cultures that are there we would like other people to come mm -hmm. and then uh, us to share oh. and then and then them to go because th maybe they have expertise we in can't those in those areas mm -hmm. yeah and then you know introduce them to people like uh, east african arts who mm -hmm. is a funding uh, partner and they fund such projects and then we we just uh, you know they fly on their own and then we just sit in the background and we clap because then we become part of this bigger whole we don't have to be everything so yeah. it's not a matter of you guys being the driver it's about just enabling other artists who have you know potential to grow in different directions exactly and tell the same story 
just from different angles. Exactly. I love that. Now, you have mentioned, you know, partnerships, and maybe an artist out there is wondering, okay, I have this idea, and I don't know how to go about it. When it comes to looking for partnerships and also um, potential partners, how can they come on board and be part of this? Those looking for partnerships and potential partners, how can they even just meet and be part of this and help tell the culture and bring, out, bring it back to life? Uh, so for, for an artist, I'd suggest uh, following organizations like, uh, for example, DocuBox mm -hmm. and, and uh, East African Culture Fund. And, and from there, they tell not just the opportunities that they have, they tell other opportunities uh, on their social pages. So mm -hmm. they, are, they, they bring together like a hub of many other opportunities that you can start to follow. In film, in the visual arts, uh, in music, there is music in Africa, which uh, you can follow and uh, sign up to their newsletter. Yeah. And then they tell you a lot of musical opportunities all over the continent and that kind of thing. So those are the three areas we are working in. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you Google, there are a lot more. Yeah. So uh, for funders who are looking to be part of this process, again, they can get in touch with us mm -hmm. or with any of the other cultural organizations. Yeah. And then uh, we can have a discussion on how to do that. Yeah. All right, and also thinking of doing this project, you know, on a much bigger scale, on a national scale, you also can think of the government. Yeah. What role do you think the government can even play when it comes to just helping tell such stories uh, through creatives for that matter, and especially the younger category of our population? I think, yeah, it would be, it would be really, really amazing. Uh, so far, we work through an organization called the Creative Economy Working Group, mm -hmm. which is trying to push to to push policy so that it's not just a one-off, yeah. So that it's properly structured, so that it continues. And we hope that such projects now inspire the policy makers yeah. to pass these policies so that there's an arts council that actually funds these projects on a national level. Because how cool would it be if we put out this project and then there was an arts council which is like, okay, we're gonna fund it in maybe eight regions or and every then, county yeah exactly exactly yeah if we're really ambitious and then we would just provide like some technical support mm -hmm. and then people would run on their own and then i think it would be really amazing yeah so the government can, does have a role to play if they're willing to come on board and it's true it's yeah. it's it's been a long process and but i think if they pass the culture policy and the film policy and then are able to fund the arts council within that then we'd really like we'd be talking we'd be in business so we'd be in business yeah. <laughs> not just do it not just be yeah there. not just one of one you off. know yeah all right now also speaking of you know um you had mentioned that this uh these two projects are part of a bigger project yeah. when can we expect some of the next projects that are set to be um released in line with this cultural bit Okay, so some of the new work is going to be released in Glasgow in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the exhibition is opening on ex at Mini Studios on October 11th. They do come through on, Oct on November 8th because that's when we'll be there as the artists are uh, presenting. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, please follow us on the pages and then you'll see us in Nairobi early next year or mid next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, that's yet for to the be Kenyan yeah, for the Kenyan launch. Yeah, and then we'll also have a launch in Trukana. All yeah. right. All right, so do we have a name that we can be looking forward to or what? If you follow Trukana, uh, hashtag artists exchange mm -hmm. with an X, like artists exchange, exchange. yeah. yeah. We'll be there, but we'll also make noise and we'll come. Hopefully, we can come back now that we have back here yeah. <laughs> for the lifestyle segment. Yes, tell us a bit about how the journey has been going on. Yeah, so um, if we can come back then and tell you when we are close to that, we'd be very, very happy. Yeah, now in regards to support from the people, from the creatives, from the industry, there's so many stakeholders who come into play yeah. when you talk about you know talking about our culture and presenting our culture from our own point of view. Mm -hmm. In terms of support, what more do you feel, you know, as a creative, as an artist, needs to be done to help more of these projects come to life? Th those kind of things, we'd like it actually to be Kenyan funded. You yeah. know, it would be so amazing if uh, they could just pass the culture bill with an arts council so that it's all internal. It would be so amazing. Though I have to say there has been some really good progress because when you go to the museum nowadays, you see some really good work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I have to say Kenyans are very, um, 
they're very driven people. If you just look online, mm -hmm. you just see so many beautiful works of art, especially in the digital space. And young people are not waiting for anyone. Mm -hmm. But in terms of scaling, they do need that kind of policy and support to be able to scale it in a big way. Yeah. All right. Now, you also mentioned, you know, you work with Content House. Uh, Content House. Yeah. Um, how can guys be in touch when, in terms of uh, trying to bring all this content that they may be having, but they don't know how to sort of put it out there or package it because that is also an area that some of the creators struggle with is the packaging bit of you know you may be having a project or a song or a piece of art but you don't know how to go about packaging it in a professional way so you also end up losing financially and you know your project may you know be compromised when it comes to helping artists know how to package themselves professionally how would you advise that from a content uh, creator's point of view I think uh, nowadays, I, I believe in YouTube University, you know, <laughs> I think there's so much information out there on what yeah. to do. And it's just to keep, to keep trying until you get it. But I find people nowadays are very savvy and because they really research a lot online and there's so many resources online, mm -hmm. classes for like uh, maybe 700 bob, 200 bob, some are free, a lot are free. And I think it's really good. And also there are people like, uh, if you want to do it, like proper proper like a like a diploma there's people like ADMI mm -hmm. you know uh, which is really doing good work and they're based right here in town uh, if you want like a course like a free course you can apply to GOTE mm -hmm. or to yeah, again British Council uh, but for me I believe right now there's so much knowledge on YouTube that and you're gonna be bad for a while and you have to accept that you know and like maybe your first six months is not gonna be good but if you keep going within a year i believe you'll, you'll be see doing change. something yeah all right yeah. fantastic thank you so much for coming through you know as i bring the conversation to chris maybe um just a word of advice to our people when it comes to not um shying away from the richness and the diversity and the differentness if that makes sense yeah that comes with culture because we you find people shying away because of some things or how some looks that come with culture yeah. and yet it's supposed to be beauty in them yeah so uh, yeah i think sometimes there's things that may be maybe a bit repressive about some of the cultural practices mm -hmm. but i think overall uh, if we t take the the concepts of sharing and community and you know and 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 the beauty that comes with it we can take those ones that we can carry forward that serve us going forward mm -hmm. yeah and those we don't have to be shy about yeah you don't have to be shy about just <laughs> as she said it's not about you know um going with everything something some cultural things may be retrogressive but it's not about dwelling on that that is not good it's about the beauty in our culture uh, the beauty that you know comes with culture and you know that uh, we also have a segment here every last Thursday of the month is Afri Thursday just oh, about yeah. celebrating the African culture the different cultures that are there and last month we we're actually celebrating the Ma culture oh, cool. and we had some fantastic Maasai artists coming through they're sharing with us uh, their culture and why they have chosen to just stick to the good that comes with culture. So it's not about just letting it go because, you know, we're keeping up with the times. It's about embracing it and carrying with you that that is truly and Africanly you. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, Jay. Uh, just remind us how guys can find you on social media. Uh, for me individually, uh, Lebo7 on Twitter, Jackie Lebo on Instagram, yeah. and Content House content house ke on all the platforms all right yeah and of course you can go on the website to just get to know more about the exchange project yeah trukanafilm.com trukanafilm.com yes get onto that uh, website if you are a creative and you're looking to just bring your idea to life and you think this would be a fantastic platform check them out share with them your ideas remember it's not about one specific angle it's about going all out and telling our african stories what if kasirika ukisikias jui an african word has been patented do you wear and it yet is originally African and the other day we we're actually having a conversation about you know back in uh, high school um, we were being asked who discovered Mount Kenya and it's mm -hmm. a white man and you're like wait there were Kikuyu people living there how could it be a white man who had discovered that and yet we had Kikuyu people living there you know some things like those it's just about telling our story and not waiting for other people to tell it and then we complain all right so this has been you know the artist exchange project check them out on social media get to know what more they are doing and how you can be part of this uh, and you can also send through your questions or any comments in regards to this and uh, to this attack her as well she has given us uh, her social media handles keep uh, them coming through our hashtag on twitter still remains good morning kenya my handle is 
Mzee Junwambui and our official station handle is at KBC Television, SMS number 20154. Do stay with us. More of Good Morning Kenya does continue.